Hello everybody and welcome, I am Bricker Boom, and it's time to see if we can beat the game Pokemon Fire Red with only using a Hound Hour. Now, my voice may sound a little bit tired, and that's because it is, because I'm an idiot, did not check my levels, and accidentally recorded two full voice scripts without actually unmuting my microphone. So there is that. So, I haven't brought any Pokemon from newer games into the older ones, and I realize that's a bit of a weird choice, because taking a look at it, there are hundreds of options to be able to do something goofy by doing this, and it would be kind of cool to see how a newer Pokemon may stack up in a gym that it wasn't introduced in, because usually when a Pokemon is introduced into a certain gym, they've got that game in mind. But, enough speculation, let's go ahead and hop into the rules. I can only use Hound Hour in battle, I can use other Pokemon for HMs, and I can't use items in battle. Now, I do use rare candies outside of battle to save myself time and allow more content to get released to y'all. To make sure we're not just immediately leveling up at a loss, I do try every battle at least three times, though my own pride usually makes me try about a dozen times. We name ourselves Gonzo to give a shout out to the real Gonzo, someone I actually met on YouTube and I'm doing a Soul Link Nuzlocke with, video to come out later, or attempting to do a Soul Link Nuzlocke with. Timing and scheduling is an absolute nightmare as an adult. Hound Hour has a base stat total of 330, which isn't the worst we've used, but it's by far not the best. Our best stat is in Special Attack, which is passable, but our regular defense is paper thin. That means the beginning fights where physical attack is used more often than special attack is probably going to be brutal. I gave the rival Charizard since he has such a strong physical attack. It seemed he'd be the hardest for us to handle. Blastoise was another option, but I want to say by the end of the game, he has the very inaccurate move Hydro Pump, so all it would be is just us trying to avoid one Hydro Pump and then destroying him because at the end of the day, Blastoise, despite it being my favorite of the original three, is very slow, so we're going to be a bit outspeeded every single time, so we'd either just have to get a lucky crit or avoid a very inaccurate move. For Hound Hour, his move pool isn't great, but he at least gets Bite at level 25 and Flamethrower at level 43, though we'll probably just visit the casino and gamble rather than wait so long. I, I can't imagine a scenario where we're still level 43 just getting into Celadon City. By TM, he can learn a decent amount, but we'll see what we need as we go into the run. We enter the fight with the rival of the lab, and this is exactly what I mean. We're doing so little damage in comparison to the rival, it doesn't take long for us to go down, and this early in the game, well, it's kind of expected. Even if we crit once, I still think we would have ended up losing the battle. The good news is, though, next up is Viridian Forest. We spend our time burning through all of the bugs and doing some wild encounters as well. With Brock being the first person that we have to fight as a gym leader, we're gonna need the levels. Now, the good news is rock types have a poor special defense, so our fire attacks will still do a decent amount with enough levels behind them. By the time we go to fight the optional rival fight, we've just hit level 11. The rival sends out Pidgey first, who we use Ember on to take below half and we get sand attacked. Thankfully, the next Ember connects before any more sand attacks can wreck us. Charmander is next, so we miss our first Ember and get hit with Scratch for a decent amount. We trade attacks back and forth for a little while and get all the way down to 1 HP, but a lucky crit that definitely mattered was able to take out Charmander to win us the battle and get a little extra EXP. On the way back to Pewter, we do level up a little bit in the forest of the wild grass, and we're at level 13 when we get back to Pewter. Geodude is first, and doing a concerning amount of damage as we begin using Ember. Thankfully, he misses a tackle and we burn him, so his physical attack is immediately cut, and he spends the next turn defense curling, so we take him out next turn. When Onyx comes out, yeah, it immediately ends us with Rock Tomb. The next few attempts in the same way, unfortunately, but even if we get a lucky burn immediately, we're still not able to take down the Onyx, but a few attempts in, we managed to take down Geodude without him doing much. 
Onyx, on the other hand, misses Rock Tomb, and then just settles on using Bind, which does very little, even with our paper-thin defense. So from there, it's a fifth-time victory, and we're able to move on. Now, normally, depending on the Pokémon, of course, we're over-leveled at this state, but in this case, because of Brock throwing the match, we're basically at the same level as everyone else. We do make our way through Mount Moon and pass up the Mega Punch Mega Kick guys, because we have no hands and we're all feet. After we get to Cerulean, we go ahead and face trainers in Misty's Gym for a little EXP and attempt to fight Gary at level 18, but it's not going well. We can't even make it past the Pidgeotto. Between getting sand attacked into Oblivion and the quick attacks, we immediately get taken out before we can even take down the bird. We try again at level 20 and we get past Pidgeotto, then get taken down by a quick attacking Rattata. This is depressing. <laughs> I loved this Pokemon a lot growing up, but now that I know how pitifully it stacks up against a Rattata, I'm kind of rethinking my love. Post-editing Burger Boom here. Um, I kind of forgot to cover the winning rival fight in the script, but we do win. Um, we have to level up, and this is really embarrassing. Bye. By the time we get to Misty, we're at level 27, and we hit Staryu with a bite for a clean one-shot. When Starmie comes out, we get hit with Water Pulse below half, but th thankfully manage to take it down with one hit as well. We go through the ship and take the time to take out some trainers since we don't pack as much power as I'd like. This will help because it means that we won't have to rely on rare candies quite as much. By the time we get to the rival, we're at level 32 thanks to those battles and take out Pidgeotto in one bite. Next up is Raticate, we continue to one-shot. Kadabra, same formula. Charmeleon is last and we take it to Red with Bite, we get Growled, and then take it down the next turn. After that, we go to the gym for Surge and manage to fumble our way through the puzzle. Voltorb is first, so we use Ember to bring it to red. Shockwave does a small bit, and then Surge heals up, and Ember thankfully crits to knock it out. Pikachu is next, and we continue with Ember, but get hit with a decent quick attack. Thankfully, the Ember one-shots and allows us to avoid getting staticked, even with the quick attack. Last up is Raichu, and we take it to yellow with a critical hit Ember. We do get paralyzed, and Raichu double teams, and we stay paralyzed to get hit with Shockwave before finally biting the rat and taking the victory. After that, it's a journey through a dark cave and some underage gambling in Celadon City, along with taking down a crime lord. We do attach the black glasses to Houndour to make him look a baller, and challenge Giovanni. Giovanni sends out Onyx, and we attack with Bite to knock it out for the one-shot. Rhyhorn is next, and we also manage to take it down quickly. Last is Kangaskhan, who we use Flamethrower on for about half, we do manage to burn it. Mega Punch hits hard due to a crit, but we do manage to take it out with one more Flamethrower. After that, we can head back to Lavender Town and fight the rival. Pidgeotto is first going down to a single bite. Gyarados is next, and this Pokemon will likely be a problem in the future, but it does go to half. We get hit with Thrash, and then it goes down the next turn. Kadabra is out, and we take it out with a one-shot, and Charmeleon actually goes down to a critical hit bite. Then the scrambled eggs also go down to a single shot. Now that we're in the mid-game and Houndour has a couple better attacking moves, this is actually going quite well. We make our way through the rest of the tower, and then it's back to Celadon to grab the gym badge. As we get to Celadon, Erica, I mean, I'm sure you know how it goes. We leave a building full of burnt Pokemon in our wake and leaving a pile of ashes to those who dare get near us. That's half the badges down. Afterwards, it's Cycling Road, the Safari Zone, and soon enough it's time for us to fight Koga. Coughing is first and we hit it hard with Flamethrower and nail a crit, which I don't think mattered. Muck is up and is a lot bulkier than Coughing, but goes above half with a single Flamethrower. It does minimize, so we switch to Feint Attack, get hit hard with Sludge. We do manage to take it down to red, but unfortunately we go down the next turn. From here, we do have to try a few times, mostly due to Toxic, but we finally get a decent idea and pattern going. Coughing we know is going to go down with one shot, and we only take Muck down this time around due to a lucky crit. The next Coughing goes down easy. Weezing is down to red in one hit, heals up. There's a bit of back and forth, 
but we do manage to take it out as well. So maybe the mid-game isn't quite as easy as I thought. I'm gonna be honest, Muck getting crit and Weezing also getting crit is probably the only reason we managed to win at such a low level. After this, we have a bit of a choice to make. We can either go to Sylvco or we can go to Cinnabar. The problem with both is our level. Houndour's fragility is catching up to us, so I make the choice to try our hand at the rival fight. Now, he has a pretty well-evolved team and sends out Pidgeot first, who goes to low red due to a crit. Wing attack brings us near half, and we take it out next turn. Gyarados is next and uses Twister, and we manage to take it down, but we're not looking great. Charizard does boost our attack power using a fire move, but then wises up and takes us down with a physical attack next turn. From there, we go through the rest of the tower and fight trainers and candy up once to get to level 50. We take Pidgeot out with a couple crunches and Gyarados meets the same fate, but due to Dragon Rage, we're down to 40 HP. Charizard comes out and we use Crunch to bring it to half, but then we go down. After that, that's enough to convince me to go to Cinnabar, so we hightail it there, go through the mansion, and in no time at all, we're heading to fight Blaine. Growlithe comes out first and we take Crunch. Growlithe comes out first and we use Crunch to take it out one shot. Ponyta comes out and also goes down to one shot. Rapidash goes below half with Crunch, hits us with a decent stomp, then goes down to one more. Last up is Arcanine, and we manage to take it a bit above half and manage to take down its special defense. Takedown brings us all the way to 8 HP, and his health goes below half due to the recoil, allowing one more Crunch to hit hard and take it down for the victory. Time to go back to the rival. We're two levels higher, which could make plenty of a difference, and we do have a badge to boost our power a bit too. Pidgeot is first, and we use Crunch, and it takes it to yellow and lowers its special. Wing attack hits hard, and a second Crunch is enough to take it out. Gyarados comes out, and we use Crunch to bring it below half. Dragon Rage leaves us with 43, and then we manage to take it out. Charizard comes out, and thankfully we get a critical hit, that I am a thousand percent sure mattered. From there, the eggs and Alakazam are an easy one-shot to win us the battle. Without that crit, I'm fairly certain we would still be there. Crunch is so much better than Bite and will likely have to carry us for the Giovanni fight, but only one way to find out. Giovanni sends out Nidorito and we use Flamethrower to avoid Poison Point. Nido Queen goes down to a couple of flamethrowers, and Rhyhorn goes down to a single crunch. Kangaskhan gets us with a fake out, then gets hit with a critical hit crunch to win the battle. I don't know why we've hit a string of crits, but I'm not going to complain about it. Now, if I'm the one getting hit by the critical hits, then I absolutely will complain about it, but right now, we good. Next up is Sabrina's Gym, and I have to imagine y'all know that this is going to go just like Erica's Gym. Sabrina sends out Kadabra and Mr. Mime, who both go down to a single crunch. Venomoth comes out, and we go with a slightly different tactic and use Flamethrower instead of Crunch. Then when Alakazam comes out, it outspeeds us, which isn't much of a surprise, but only Calm Minds, so we take it down with Crunch as well. Once again, a pretty easy gym battle, but you won't hear me complaining. Getting the combination of both Fire and Dark-type moves is actually pretty nice and allows us to use some moves we normally don't get access to. As we go to Giovanni, I, I'm kind of curious. How do you guys like Pokemon that aren't typically found in the game being used? I'm having a blast, but it helps to know what you guys like, so let me know in the comments. From there, we're able to go fight Giovanni for the last time, and now he does have a much scarier team. After getting earthquaked into oblivion during the Pikachu run, I don't have many hopes for a first time victory whatsoever. Giovanni sends out Rhyhorn first, so we use Crunch to take it out with one shot, which, okay, that's easier than I thought. We outspeed Duck Trio, and okay, we take it out too. Nido Queen is third, and we switch to Flamethrower to take it below half. Earthquake hits, and. Yeah, that's what I thought. One shot down. Earthquake ends just about every attempt, and even if we get a lucky crit on Nido Queen, the Nido King then goes ahead and takes revenge. We just need a couple more levels. At 65, we're still taking down Rhyhorn and Dugtrio with one level, and Nido Queen takes us down to 8 HP with a single Earthquake. Thankfully, we're able to take her down before she can attack again, and Nido King goes down to a single Flamethrower due to a crit, 
And then the last Rhyhorn goes down as well to finally get us the 8th badge. Not nearly as bad as Pikachu, but Earthquake is an insanely powerful move, and a Pokemon that's weak against it is likely going to end up getting wrecked. Now, we can do the pre-rival fight, and it does take a few attempts, but we don't have to level up, so there's that. With this fight, Pidgeot goes down to two flamethrowers, Rhyhorn goes down to a crunch. Thankfully, for whatever reason, Gyarados only bothers using Rain Dance, so we're able to take it out before we end up taking any type of damage. Now, unfortunately, that does make Flamethrower weaker, but that's fine, we didn't take damage. Charizard uses Wing Attack, but we live off 31 HP and manage to take it out with a couple crunches. When Execute comes out, we take it down with Crunch, level up, outspeed Alakazam, surprisingly, and take it out to win us a fairly carefree pre-rival fight. Anytime I don't have to spend 30 minutes on this fight, I am happy to call it a win. The trek through Victory Road is easy enough, and despite Lorelai calling herself an Ice Specialist, they're also half water. Dugong goes down to a couple flamethrowers but nails us with Surf. Cloyster has no special defense whatsoever and goes down. With Slowbro, we thankfully have Crunch ready to go, but Lapras takes us out time and time again. Unfortunately, we can't one-shot it, and it can easily brush us off. From there, we begin a long line of attempts, and Lapras even gets bored of drowning us and takes us down with Body Slam as well. The next few attempts basically go the same until we get to Lapras. This time around, thankfully, we live off Surf with 28 HP, manage to take it out, and then when Jinx comes out, we can take it down with a single crunch as well. Next up is Bruno, who... I can't believe I'm saying this. is also going to be a challenge because fighting is strong against Dark-type. Onyx is out first, so we use Crunch to take it down. Flamethrower takes the Hitmonchan down to yellow, and then we get taken down with one shot. Fighting moves are super effective against Dark. On the lucky attempts, we get past Hitmonchan, then Hitmonlee takes us out. If we're extra super duper lucky, we get past Hitmonlee and then get absolutely demolished by Cross Chomp Machamp. Unfortunately, by the time we're at this point in the game, and at this level, we don't have the option of vitamins or even too much of an updated moveset because we do need that for future battles because there's still three more people after this. So finally, at level 85, we're still getting destroyed until this attempt. Onyx goes down repeatedly to a single crunch no matter what. Hitmonchan is usually a two-shot, but this time uses block, which does a decent amount of damage. Thankfully, we burn it, so he doesn't get the opportunity to heal up, and burn is actually what takes it out at the end of his turn. When Hitmonlee comes out, we also burn it, so its attack doesn't do much, but even with that, our HP is still down to 14. The next Onyx goes down to Crunch. As Machamp comes out, we use Flamethrower. It finally misses an attack, and another Flamethrower is enough to take it out. As we move on to Agatha, this is the one Elite Four member that I actually feel like we have some kind of advantage with. Ghost-type are fast but frail, much like our Pokémon, and we're actually special effective against them. So, Gengar is up first, and we use Crunch, which decimates it in one shot. Golbat goes down to a single flamethrower. Arbok lowers our attack and lives through a crunch, sludging us and poisoning us, but we still manage to take it out. We do end up taking out the next Gengar, but unfortunately the poison at that point is enough to go ahead and end that attempt. The second attempt is basically the same, except this time Sludge Bomb doesn't poison, which allows us to take out the rest of her team without much issue. For Lance, we go up and take Gyarados out in two crunches, which is fine by me. Aerodactyl comes out and uses Ancient Power, which takes us all the way to 3 HP. We do manage to take it out, but then the Dragonite is able to immediately take us out. Now, once again, we're in a situation where we need to just be a bit tankier or faster, but we're kind of getting close to level 100. I don't think it'll take that many levels, but we'll see how this goes after a few attempts. We try again at level 95 because we were still getting decimated at level 90. Hopefully this will give us the power to take Aerodactyl out of one shot. 
Gyarados is out first, that always ends the same. Now, we're able to take Aerodactyl out in one shot, meaning he can't use Scary Face or destroy our speed by doing so, or hit us very hard with Ancient Power. With that, we can take Dragonite to yellow, he retaliates with Safeguard, so we're able to go ahead and take it out. After that, the next two Dragonair are able to go down without too much of a problem. With the rival, we take out Pidgeot and Rhyhorn, both with one Crunch. We whittle Gyarados down with a Flamethrower, then take it out with Crunch. As Charizard comes out, we actually get a critical hit Crunch, taking it out. I'm about 105% sure that without that critical hit, it would still be up. Alakazam, of course, goes down to Crunch, and then the eggs go down to a single Flamethrower, winning us the challenge. This is also the first time we've gone up against the rival and actually beat him on the first try, so I'm actually feeling pretty proud of that. And now, because you've made it this far, I have a quick story. I was recording the Heracross challenge and got about halfway through when my power flickered, meaning the saves I had done in the game during that time period were now footage I could no longer use. Unfortunately, that means that I got set back, so we're going to switch gears a little bit. We have three legendary birds and a big bad psychic monster that we haven't played with, so we're going to do a few legendary runs for the next couple weeks while I try to go ahead and get back on track with the regular challenge runs. The Mewtwo run is a little bit different. I'm actually going to be answering some questions that I've had Discord, through other YouTube comments, things of that nature, even on Twitter. So, make sure you tune in, and as always, if you liked the video, even if you didn't like the video, think about hitting the like and subscribe button, because it really does help me out. And until next time, everybody, peace out.